This video is about design specifications, uh, so what design specifications are and how we can write and use a design specification in a design project. Now, a design a specification should be a, a very simple um, uh, part of your project and it should be very useful as well. However, in my experience, it's the one bit that's done quite poorly um, in, uh, in student portfolios, mainly for the reason that um, it's, it's not really used. Okay, So a lot of students will write a series of design specification criteria, um, but they will generate them quite often from their head, or they will be quite generic, which means the, the points will not really um, relate to their project specifically. It will relate to a project like theirs, or they will just, in the, in the worst case scenario, it could relate, relate to any product at any time. Okay, so. It's important for a, for a specification to be good, essentially to start in the right place, okay? And the right place would be to analyze your design context and work out exactly what is asked of you in the task and develop your design brief from there, obviously, okay? And that should dictate some of the key specification criteria at the start. In addition to this, to clarify the points more closely, it's probably likely that you will have planned your research and undertaken a series of research. We've talked in previous videos about producing uh, consumer profiles, analyzing similar products, perhaps getting anthropometric data, doing questionnaires, okay. Series of bits of research that are gonna give you very vital pieces of information that are gonna allow you to make your project really well, okay. so. Um, this will make the, the design specification very easy to read, right, because ultimately all you have to do is if in your design context it says something like, you know, your product should be suitable for the UK market, that is straight away a design criteria. And we can see this student here, he's gone down and he's, he's picked these first criteria here straight from the design context and it's very, very easy to see that okay so I'd say with your design specification it's useful to write a range of different criteria okay um, but it's very important as well to make sure the criteria are very comprehensive and they make sense and you're not just writing things for the sake of writing things okay now this being said it's also important not to neglect like important aspects of the um, of the project and that's where structures like Access FM can come in useful okay so when I'm writing a design specification it's probably useful or going back a little bit I suppose when I'm planning my research or undertaking my research I've thought about all of these criteria when I'm creating my project so I've thought about the a the aesthetics I've thought about the cost that might um, be a, a restraint on the project or the cost to produce it. I thought about the consumer, the environment, the safety, the size, the function, which I think, to be honest, I would say function is one of the key kind of areas, okay? And I thought about the materials and the manufacture of the product as well, okay? So, as I say, it's important to use, you know, key criteria to kind of, you know, really make sure that we refine it down, but to make sure that we don't forget anything, it's also important, obviously, to consider Access FM, and it's probably likely you're going to do this in the research phase anyway, so it shouldn't come as a surprise to you when you get to the design specification, okay? Now, the other key thing, I mean, I, I lay the uh, specifications out like this, okay? So we've got sort of three kind of um, headings at the top, okay? We've got specification criteria, which is just our brief statements there. We've got our justifications. Now, this is our uh, quite an important thing, I think. Okay, so I think the specification point itself can be quite brief. The product must look smart. Mm, that's not maybe the best uh, criteria. It's a little bit, it's a bit spurious there. Okay, but basically, in the justification, we can give a lot more information as to why we feel that 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 point is is important. Okay, I mean, if we go to the top one, it should be suitable for UK market. There, he's put in there when the product is made. It should um, be confirmed by looking at the price of similar products. We can find the average product product base around the UK market. Okay, that's a bit more sensible than than some of the other points. But it's giving, you know, reason for that that point to be there and reason to to make it important. Okay, and finally. Just to show that you've gone through the process, as I say, because you should have, and that's the point of a design specification, we're going to provide evidence, okay? So in the case of the first point there, he's put his point, he's given a reason as to why it's important, and then he's shown where in his research that he's seen that that's an important point. In this case, the analysis of the design context and his design brief that he wrote previously in the um, in the thing. But this is where I'm saying about how easy the specification could be, because we've done some analysis of the design context there, 
and this student has written a consumer profile well he's got some more points there okay it would have been nice to see a few more you know uh, links to other bits of research that he's done but you know he's, he's got quite a, uh, a list of uh, points there as well okay so we have uh, written a range of points we've based it on access fm to cover all bases we've linked the slides um to the um uh, sorry, we'll link the slides and the, the points together, okay? Now, the, the final thing which I like uh, students to do is to kind of, you know, do a bit of prioritization as to what is important and what is less important, okay? Because later on in the project, the specification is probably going to be used in the first instance when you're designing to make sure that you do exactly what you're, you're aiming to do in your design brief and, and making sure you're not forgetting anything. And later on, as you progress through your designs, you're going to be constantly evaluating and modifying your designs through an iterative process, okay? So it's probably quite important to have your design specification there as well, so you can see and evaluate against each criteria, which is going to be useful. And I like students to... Um, um, in addition to ordering the points from kind of uh, most important at the top to kind of least important down the bottom, okay, to also, where possible, organize them into essential and desirable criteria, and in some cases also to list relevant issues. I'll talk about that in a second, okay. So essential criteria are things that the specification is absolutely an unbudging point, okay. If you don't, if you don't, um, meet uh, an essential criteria effectively you've you failed you haven't met the task okay now desirable criteria are things more like where there is uh, a, a, an area of um, movability I suppose on the point okay so you might say I'd like my product to um, be red in color okay but it's probably likely that the product could succeed if, if it maybe had aspects of the red color on it or, or you know you, you used certain different colors close on the spectrum or something like this so it's, it's not an unbudgeable point okay but some things are essential okay so um, in the case of when we're analyzing our design contest as we've seen here okay if you're not meeting the points in the design context it's obviously that your product is going to fail okay so the uh, the student here has, has highlighted essential points in red as you can see and he's I think it uh, highlighted his more desirable criteria from his consumer profile there in blue okay you can also go one step further and talk about relevant issues okay so relevant issues this is more on the legacy specification but it also comes into the new um, design spec uh, as well for the, the new product design or design technology course okay and relevant issues are the moral environmental social and sustainability criteria okay and I think it's a good idea it's good practice to highlight these points as separate okay perhaps using the color green because we think of green and the environment okay to talk about relevant issues and again this is going to make your design specification that more comprehensive to show that you're you're focusing on all the points okay so that's my brief uh, guide on how you might um, create a design specification.